package. En el lado azul, defendiendo al equipo fuego, un jugador ha farmeado su pase hasta cuartos de final. ¡Liva! Side. He transformed the competition where he took down Optimus each Uzi. Good luck, gentlemen. May the best man win. Whew. All right, so we are going to get to see Uzi in action here. Uh, but I do want to talk up Levi because yep. he has been the best player by far for me from GPL. This guy has been continually impressing on Lee Sin most of the time. So Kha'Zix. Uh, I don't think Uzi will agree to a Lee Sin 1v1 or anything, but that would definitely be his best chance, I think. Yeah, that was also some uh, muy bien Spanish there from Dash in the intro. Uh -huh. You're definitely leveling up. So I wonder what they have in store next for us. But yeah. Levi impressed, even in IWCA, a couple of games, even in the 1v1s, he was like pretty yeah. solid. But he's going up against the monster that is Uzi. It kind of feels a little bit unlucky for him to be stuck in his uh, kind of bracket here in the quarterfinal. Yeah, we'll see. You know, Levi could go with, you know, something like uh, an AD carry for himself as well. You know, build up on defenses and try and grind it out that way. But I think the most success we've seen in cracking the AD carry line has been with mages, level six power yep. spikes like LeBlanc's and the Cassiopeia's, um, you know, surprising them with a lot of that damage, just all in damage. And I wonder if then Uzi is going to use that knowledge that you just told us and ban out LeBlanc. I mean, I, I would say definitely ban out LeBlanc all game. Syndra's already off the board, and that's kind of the other one up there in that yep. top tier of the mages right now. But, you know, a lot of people under the impression that LeBlanc is one of the most, if not the most, uh, powerful champion in the game. All right, these are obviously hovers. These guys are not going to lock these champions in. We see the Quinn ban as well. It made a bit of a resurgence in the second and third day, definitely, because it's just a really strong 1v1 champion. Um, Reckless had an amazing game on the okay. jungle Quinn, which he had to double jungle with Mata, who decided to insta-lock uh, and still went legendary and carried. So definitely viable uh, in these fun game modes. And Levi looking for some uh, Lee Sin tribute to himself. Yeah, <laughs> to each of the king. Shout out to myself. Thank you very much. Uh, great Lee Sin there. Meanwhile, uh, Urgot was the band that Uzi decided to go with besides the LeBlanc. And Urgot also has had a resurgence here. Uh, you know, you get the E lock on, very long range, and is another one of the champions that can grind it out. There is the LeBlanc we're talking Ooh, about. Ooh, this is scary because it feels really easy for a LeBlanc to play into Kalista. You can hide. In the minion way, far and away enough that if Kalista threatens you, you'll draw a lot of the minion aggro. You know, all these auto attacks will just force you to take so much damage from minions. The push could be on the side of LeBlanc later on as well. And then just level six, how do you survive the three chain burst? Exactly. The only, Whenever I see Uzi, I'm looking for outplay potential with his champion. And with Kalista there, against LeBlanc, the only outplay really is the sidestepping on the chains. Yeah. There's one uh, more thing. Stacking the rend on the creep, and then when it's rolling, you, you can throw a spear yep. through it, and you know, trying to uh, transfer a bunch of spears. That one is very hard to pull off. And also if he wins really a game by that, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> if he wins a game with that, though, then you definitely deserve uh, a YouTube highlight yep. uh, reel for that one. You get the highlight reel. That means we need to track if he's actually maxing maybe Q, you know, to get more damage. If he puts two points in Q early to yeah. surprise and execute on the minion, everybody always expects Kalista Q to do a certain amount of damage. But if suddenly that minion gets Q'd from half HP, three spears carry over, <laughs> like maybe it's possible. If anybody's going to do it, Uzi could pull it off. Definitely. Uh, I'm really excited for this one, actually, because Levi has been uh, definitely impressing, even though Uzi is uh, uh, a king of 80 carries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely a chance here for the LeBlanc. Always a chance for LeBlanc players. And uh, let's check in on those runes. Is he going super offensive LeBlanc, or is he kind of trying to, you know, I started, I started with Uzi, and Uzi's only running like 6.7 MR, so he's only spending half of his glyphs on magic resistance, Ooh. but he's specking heavily into attack speed. He's running 24% attack speed. So again, he will likely be maxing that rend and just getting as many stacks as he can to take control of the wave. There's also a lifesteal quint on the side of Uzi. So the one thing you can kind of say about the LeBlanc rework, right? You know, obviously it's been great and she's still super powerful, but it does take a little bit more time. So Uzi trying to squeeze in as much attack speed as possible for a chase down possibly. 
um, you know, as uh, Levi's trying to back off a little bit for the secondary engage there, but I, I would definitely go full blue MR runes at least yeah. for the efficiency of that. I definitely think so. Levi's, uh, <laughs> he wanted some uh, magic oh. pen on his reds, but then he switched over to like 6 AD just to help him last it. Just, just a yeah. little bit of help, you know? Sometimes it gets really, uh, really well, pressured. But I mean, lost it against Uzi. Yeah, you, you say just for that, but it also helps out a lot with there's a lot of auto trading going on as well. I mean, he's gone pretty much even in health with the early auto trades, even though Uzi obviously has the minion wave control here and pushing into turret to try and deny. There's also that potion that he can still pop two potions versus one with the biscuits. Levy probably running a Thunder Lord, just going to confirm that for you guys. He has 0 18 12, so everybody's side specking in the resolve tree. This is not a ferocity LeBanc at all, so it's Cutting 18 and then 12 in resolve. Yeah, there are just so many high value, uh, low tier masteries yep. in there. The flat health is amazing. Um, that being said, Runic Armor, you know, in longer things is a lot better, but so many health regen masteries as well. Yeah, you got the, the, resolve the perseverance that uh, was pointed out by, <laughs> or perseverance, whatever you pronounce it. <laughs> I'll let you pronounce it however you want. In, Europe, in Europe, we say it perseverance. So, like, uh, Americans that make fun of people's accents is just ridiculous to me because almost all Americans only speak one language and <laughs> just the mere fact that you speak multiple languages I really have no say in you know criticizing any anything there yeah apart from that it's my job <laughs> <laughs> anyways Levi dashing in for the relic so that's a really good trade here he denies Uzi the leap as he wants to pick up the relic Uzi still has the push though all right, yeah, let's get back to this uh, game. We're so focused on the mastery choices for these guys because it is so important, yeah. especially in the early levels. But you know, Uzi is stacking up quite nicely here on the Callista. Does has a, a very good CS lead. But again, we talk about every time there's a mage picked, it's mostly about the all-in kill that they're looking for on the AD carries. But we're looking at some uh, lack of experience in lasting here from Levi. He lost about six creeps right there under the turret because in 1v1s, this turret deals different damages, so he leaves the range creeps on a sliver of health that you need to last it after, and it takes the melee creeps down in kind of two shots, so you need to heavy prep the melee and not touch the ranged ones, and that's where living is failing just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? If you are waiting for that level six, it will end up mattering if you don't have enough gold for that extra Doran or for that extra small item that's going to help you in the all-in. Looks like he was just trying to bait a, a summoner there, you know, fake an all-in or something, but... I think he just really wanted the CS before the base and he was willing to take a bad trade. Yeah. It's on the counter wave. It's always the best time to base, especially versus, like, kind of uh, carry that can't do any AoE clear, like Uzi right here. He's, like, manually taking him down one by one, and then the cannon will enter the turret range, making it so that you lose at most two or three CS. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, yeah, it does take not too long to get back to this uh, wave. You know, mm -hmm. it's even shorter than mid lane or something. Yep. But what he did give up there with that back uh, is the relic spawn. And so there is going to be not only minion wave advantage and a lot of CS yep. advantage for Uzi, but also the extra relic on his side as Levi could right now run and try and rush to pick that up before Uzi gets back. But concentrating on the minions, you know, needs that tiny bit of extra gold. Yeah, but he's still messing up the CS there too. Like uncontested creeps being dropped there. It's going to be hard for him to seemingly lost it just with autos and he's wasting a lot of mana honestly on farming and the other thing to me is that if you're going with a mage and you're going with a kill strategy that's the time when you buy offensive items right you buy cloth armors if Ooh, you're going yeah. to try and grind it out if you're going to try and you know get cs leads if you're going to go for those trades over time whereas really i would think he would just want as much power for the all-in as possible he is close to six but not close enough here not going to fool Uzi with that distortion. Throws it right back at the original spot. And he has this game in a very uh, comfortable position. Yeah, we're approaching level 6. That's obviously where Kalista falls off because he doesn't have a support to throw in versus the value that um, Levy gets from his ultimate. But he's so far behind here. Uzi has to play the CS game. I wonder if he's going to get sucked in and all in that he will lose. He has the right summoner spells yeah. in the barrier and exhaust. Very predictable damage as well from the LeBlanc. So try to carry over there. Spears ended up in the back three. Yeah, I mean, said plus minions. This is really good for Uzi. The shatter still has spears in him. So let's exhaust that barrier. This is going to be it. Uzi Almost on the chase. They disengage. All summoners blown. That's actually good for the block, uh, in my opinion here. I think that it is going to provide a lot more threat. Let's see what he does with it, too. Uh, the minions aren't going to be frozen, so he has mm -hmm. no chance at you know, denying and trying to use that brush, but we'll see what he gets on the next back. I, I definitely do not advise him going more defensive. He needs more power. 
That was tricky from Uzi, because I feel like he had rent stacks in his opponent. He could have popped it, but I felt he, he needed like a proxy creep to make that one happen. Yeah, not quite sure, you know, did he use it super early on uh, to try and clear out that last minion? Uh, I'll keep the mouse over him right now to make sure we have the cooldowns for the actual all-in. But I think you don't get spears in the enemy creeps if it's on cooldown. I don't think the new rent stacks. Oh uh, yeah, if, yeah, I think uh, you're right. Cooldown, so he had definitely, but he was just out of range. I think. Wow, really good carry over there, double spear. But he's always looking for the reset. He never wants his rent to get on cooldown. I think. Yeah, and we still have a decent amount of time, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The CS cap it will be a hundred. So uh, only at 58 right now for Uzi. Levi doesn't have to panic or anything. Yeah. It's not just about being level six and looking for the all-in. It's so much about the setup as well, because the minions really matter in these. Yeah, especially if you're tanking cannon creep damage right here. But you see Uzi is progressively getting more scared playing backwards in the lane. He's about 40 creeps to go, which gives ample opportunity for the LeBlanc to hit like level nine and go for an all-in again, especially now that these barrier and exhaust is on cooldown. I think the momentum shifting towards Levi. Not if he does that, though. Yeah. Also got a pretty good exit trade there um, as the Shatter carried over. So uh, he's feeling okay about the situation, but Callista CS is pretty decently under turret. Mm -hmm. We'll see how much pressure a LeBlanc can apply under there. Because um, Uzi is, you know, inching closer and closer towards that threshold. Yeah, it's definitely it's the ideal location to play against LeBlanc. She will take damage from the turret if she gets too close, but she has to use too much mana on CSing here under the turret. Uzi's gonna lose his all-in potential. That's a good reset here. Really nice. Uh, got the extra rain damage on Levi, even though he was out of range because of the minion for the activation. And man, with this Vamp Scepter plus a bunch of potions for Uzi, there's no way he loses uh, out in the sustain wars. But he is Captain Yolin because he did not go for no magic mental. Obviously, 100 yeah. to 0, LeBlanc could forget him. We're approaching the second rotation here for Summer Spell Smash. That should be good for Uzi then again. Yeah. And you know, we talk about the extra time that Levi had. It's every wave counting against him. A couple of misses. There. Ooh. He W'd in place then, right? I think that's what happened for Levi right there. Trying to get to the relic, but minor miss. Mishaps, honestly. A couple CS dropped in the early game, a couple bad trades. For me, uh, LeBlanc going to need to recall around 80 CS for Uzi uh, because you're not you're not going to have enough time. Uh, you need to get as much power as up. possible yeah. uh, to be able to set it up so that he's not next to his turret and just have as much AP as you can possibly go for because Uzi right now... He's going to go for 100 CS win. What's going to happen here is that it'll push in the wave, just like you're saying. Uh, we're basing for power on the side of Team Fire, but the problem is Uzi can bounce this wave. Yep. This wave will probably naturally bounce unless it gets cleared out very quickly towards Uzi. He can stall, give 20 CS to Levi, but then get the remaining 16 CS he needs to get. And he All finishes right. the head. Oh, I think it's actually over now. Wait, wait to hype this matchup, Kobe. It's, uh, well, I mean, it's so tragic, right? <laughs> we talk about the AD carry, you know, going the defensive masteries is the most reliable way mm -hmm. to, you know, gain an advantage in one versus one. Uh, and that kind of is the strategy. Uh, there are so much more exciting windows for the other champions, though. Uh -huh. so everyone kind of roots for the underdogs and against the AD carries in this mode. Uh, I just but... want to see some blood. So many <laughs> people die. Exactly. All right, we need to see Levi follow his position because he is looking for an all-in, but these spears are starting to deal damage. Remember, Kalista doesn't skill anything in W or R. It's just Q and E, and that's why you see these abilities yeah. deal so much damage compared to what you're used to. She doesn't lose any points. During it. Good prediction by Uzi. He made it go all in because he has exhaust, oh, oh, oh. barrier, and the hex drinker. Uzi is in complete control right now. Definitely not looking good for Levi. He's got to just. Oh, he knows. Yeah, he's. There's actually. Uh, you don't want to call it over because a miracle could happen, Krepo. I mean, Somebody Uzi can start taking the turret. Uzi could, yeah, exactly. You don't expect Uzi to make huge mistakes, but uh, technically possible. Nine oh. more CS, eight more CS, and he's going to have it. I want to see Uzi go for the all-in on 99 CS. Yeah. Just because he can. Double Lift definitely did that last year a couple times, and he was one auto away from losing it, even though he had a guaranteed win on CS. Uh, but definitely worth That's it. That's how he lost this year as well. He went for Levi going in again, changes not connect. He is super low. There's the exit bounce, but six more creeps. I don't think Levi has the time to base right now. Yeah. I mean, uh, Unlucky. Uh, <laughs> as that's the other thing I love most about the one v one tournament. This is not a mode the pros come in to the event practicing, so they don't know obviously the best thing. But all right, let's take, see about the uh, all in here. Uzi, two more CS, he can go for it or try and finish. That's it. There it is. There's your champion. Come.
clean, collected. Crowd isn't really too <laughs> pleased with it, but it's Uzi, so he gets an applause anyway. It is, it is Team Ice, so they're happy, you know? Give him the oh. golf claps there. Ooh. Well done. That's gonna be interesting when Uzi pulls this same strategy against Xpeke. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I think we can crowd, make crowd will not be on your side then. Yeah. Uh, and at this point, the damage is done. Hopefully. Exactly. I mean, him. this is why we set it up, right? There, there are so many drawbacks to trying a strategy other than a an efficiently ruined and masteried AD carry that's gonna try and grind it out and put the hundred CS pressure on you. Hex Drinker defense. Uh, plus, they're gonna have more gold than you due to the early trading. And, you know, Levi never really got that opportunity for the all-in. We've seen so many successful uses of it, though, yeah. right? We've got players up there. We have mage players. We see. You know, and we have people like Smeb who said, I want to win, but I want to win with style. So you know Smeb style. is not going to go the AD carry route, and he's going to The problem is, like, the strategy or... that you're, you're discussing here, which is kind of like the, the economy of LeBlanc, you know, with defensive uh, build, works if you're ahead in CS. But you can't build sustain. <laughs> you can't beat sustain by sustaining if you're down in CS. Yeah. This plays in... Uzi's wheelhouse kind of, so I think that's the main mistake that Levi made this game. And nope. Uzi accepted it gladly, you know, with the Vamp Scepter. At that point, he was so comfortable. Exactly. You, can, you can't play Uzi's game. I mean, he's one of the top ADKs in the, wor in the world to begin with, mm -hmm. uh, but he's and, and his biggest strength is laning. Of all AD carries, uh, it's, it's just so daunting of a task to go up against him. Yeah, we set it up like, yeah, of course, Uzi is playing the sustain style. It was very easy for him, but he had a lot of good sidesteps. Yeah. Every time the LeBlanc dashed in, he hopped backwards, dodging some damage, prepping up the spears. He always had the looming threat of the Q going through the minions. Didn't always discuss it every time it happened, but there is so much pressure playing against Uzi. Yeah. Whenever you're looking too closely at him, you lose control of the minion wave, and suddenly you start panicking, you buy some cloth armors, <laughs> and then you slowly get the dawning realization that you're about to lose on 100 CS. Yeah. Oh, man. And looking forward to, as well, we talk about the lead that Ice does have. Mm -hmm. If Smeb loses the next match, Ice actually just wins because they have everyone left. Basically. They get, like, all the points in the tournament. So, this, again, for 1v1s, the winner gets 250 points. Yeah. Second place is 150. And then there's 2 times 50 points for the remaining players. And that could be all for Team Ice. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, all of Team Fire's hopes here on Smeb. Uh, we'll see how much style he mm -hmm. puts in. Uh, it's a little bit of art here. We'll see how much style, how much sus uh, substance he does want to put into this next one. Because uh, if he does drop it, then that, that's going to be... Uh... Well, we're about to find out, I think. One or two matches remain. Let's send it back to Dash, who is uh, on stage ready to...